Hi everyone, I'm Matt. And I'm Brandy. And this is the Chronic Couple Podcast, where we'll be talking about chronic illnesses and things that matter to me and Brandy and a lot of just life experiences that we've had. Yeah. And I'm also an autistic man. I was late diagnosed. I'm almost 40 and just found this out. And it's been a lot of learning uh, that uh, we both have had in life. And in addition to being autistic, I'm also an IT engineer and I'm lucky enough to be able to work from home. It affords a lot of flexibility and it's really what I've found to also be my special interest. Uh, finding that out late in life is all, is very interesting. And on top of autism, I, uh, am also, uh, found out a lot of chronic illnesses that I have. Uh, one of them being hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos or HEDS as it's also known. And also I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or also known as POTS. Both of these are considered invisible illnesses. And really for a guy to have some of these diagnosed not everyone gets them diagnosed super early in life um it's actually uh very misdiagnosed with a lot of different things and it's really made me recognize a lot of things like pain in my body and symptoms and just good stuff to watch out for i think that's a great way to explain it so a little bit about myself um my name is Brandy. I'm married to Matt. Um, I am also an autistic woman and also have hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, um, which is both pretty rare for, for a couple to have yeah. um, this. Our geneticist said that we were the first couple he had ever seen um, that, that had it. Um, so I thought... This would be something that, you know, would be a good idea for us to do to share some of the knowledge that we've gained through getting our diagnosis, which wasn't the easiest thing in the world Not at all. Um, with chronic illness. And subsequently, by doing that, we both found out that we are also on the autism spectrum, which which was just, you know, insane. It explains so much. And um, it really did. And that was not an easy diagnosis um, as well. Um, so we thought that this could be some good information to share with other people who are just confused and think they're different and don't really know why and feel sick and don't really know why. I'm someone who was chronically ill my entire life, um, as a child even. And, um, something with Ehlers-Danlos is, um, mast cell activation disorder can come with that. And that's what I have. Um, some people have something in the community they call the trifecta, which is Ehlers-Danlos, POTS, which is what Matt has, and, um, and mast cell. Um, so it's kind of odd that we both have Ehlers-Danlos and then the you know, Polar the, opposite. the Com- accompanying, yeah. <laughs> accompanying comorbidity, I think, yes. as, it, as it's called. Because it's, it's already morbid enough <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that exactly. you're, you're stuck with this the rest of your life, but <laughs> yeah. you know, comorbidity. Oh, what is it our geneticist said? He sa- I said, um, so are we going to live a normal lifespan? Are we going to live as long as everyone else? And his response was, oh, yes, your life shouldn't be shortened with hypermobile EDS. Um, it's just going to be a lot more painful and a lot more crappy. Yeah, that, <laughs> than everyone that, else. That, that's always a good thing to hear. I mean, <laughs> and kind of laughed. So yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, we're just gonna have a more painful life. Okay, but um, but at the same time, it gave us validation for a lot of things. For yeah. me, I had this invisible illness that gave me a tremendous amount of pain, and I didn't realize that everyone else didn't feel pain all of the time, and. Being autistic, I was diagnosed this year as well. Matt and I were actually diagnosed at the same time. Um, The uh, at the urging of both of our therapists, we had started seeing uh, both of us seeing a therapist after being diagnosed um, with you know a rare illness that you know it's up for debate actually whether it's rare or not. Maybe it's just more underdiagnosed, but I mean. Uh, you never know with an illness that not everyone else has an illness that a lot of doctors don't really know about. We've right. had to 
educate doctors ourselves, these people who are incredibly smart. Um, well, I mean, I think, I think a great point of that was you went to your general practitioner doctor complaining about like not even being able to breathe. You were having so many problems and just your doctor's perfume triggered your, your mast cell stuff to the point where you Mm -hmm. almost like had to go to the ER. Like they, they had to find a nurse that wasn't wearing perfume. I mean, that's, that's insane that that's, That, that the medical a, field doesn't have any idea of this. That's a, yeah. a lovely symptom of mast cell activation disorder is I have a sensitivity to chemicals. And so because perfume is made with a chemical, um, I feel like I'm going to die if I'm around anyone with perfume. My throat starts to close. I turn bright red. It's physically obvious. And um, at that point in time, a few about three years ago, yeah. I was a lot sicker than I, I am now because I had no idea that I had these conditions. So I, I had spent all of my life, you know, 36, 37 years or something at the time with without being on the proper medications. So my body just hit this stopping point where it, it said enough. And I basically could not continue pushing through. I had to figure out what was wrong with me. And um, yeah, it was insane. Yeah, you you have a really hard time being around any sort of smell or chemical um, like air fresheners, Febreze. Um, it's very overloading yeah. kind of thing. Chemicals. Um, and this is really hard because if you ever have to go to the ER, it's full of chemicals. So you end up getting, you know, even sicker than you were before you walked in the door. Um, yeah. It accompanies migraines. Uh, sometimes a lesser known side effect of having this reaction, um, they call it multiple chemical sensitivity. Um and uh, for people who don't have mast cell, there are people that, that just have this reaction. But um, it's an accompanying thing, including mast cell, um, where you have to wear masks um, because going in public, it's just too much. There's too many chemicals. Um, gasoline from cars. I mean, um, the gasoline from cars one, <laughs> she's had, you've had symptoms where, it, it, depending on your health, is depending on your reaction but like the gasoline one it doesn't matter how healthy you're feeling you get a whiff of gas and it's like instant you get like shut down right my mast cells become activated and they let me know i'm not a big fan of what you're around right now so i have to get out of there pretty quick um i have a lot of the same reactions with essential oils um but at this point um you know, even just being around those, which a lot of people deem healthy, um, I still can't be around those. But an actual smell of, you know, maybe a flower or something natural, that's fine. It's only something that has this very strong, you know, type of, of smell, something made with alcohol. And it's um, it's really crippling and it makes you feel like you're just a prisoner in your house and for a little while i was and both of us have gone through so much that we just really feel like we have a lot to offer um as far as information yeah Um, and a lot of it too is just i think you you i I think when people hear the stories of what we've gone through and just like hear the way we found out like each piece of information I, i mean a lot of the information of the actual diagnoses we found just in the past year, but the past three or four years of our re- relationship has been just keep on trying to go through and find that stuff. And right. We've been I'm, married for seven years, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and, seven years. <laughs> but yeah, lot. we just, you know, at this point, we are just taking a lot of advice from from our peers. It's been really great. Actually, the community that I've met through Instagram has helped me tremendously when I did not know what was going on with me. I had no idea why I had felt this way pretty much my entire life. And then it just sort of hit this peak. And um, after trying a lot of different treatments, a lot of different medications, which I'm sure we'll get into in oh, yeah. you know more episodes, um, I ended up finding something, a plan that worked for me. And that was largely in part to a lot of uh, the people I met through Instagram and the communities there and the yeah. chronic health communities. And then the autism community has just been amazing. I, I mean, honestly, the, I think the autism community is why we started this podcast yeah. is because, I mean, got got our 
bros and broettes already on on various you didn't say i I said broettes (laughs) it's a word i make up words side note he makes up words but i kind of understand what he means because of their context and he's super goofy (laughs) and i have the mouth of a trucker so she she reins me in if that makes any sense so but he's so this sounds mean but he's almost so not funny that he's funny so hopefully yeah. you'll get his humor. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a shotgun approach. It will hit for some. It will miss for most. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, you never know. But um, yeah, we've met a great community of people on Instagram. Um, the hashtag actually autistic. Um, if you haven't, check that out. If you have any sort of questions about something, you will be speaking to actually autistic adults. Um, It's just the greatest feeling to think that you're not crazy anymore. It's like you go your entire life feeling like something is wrong with you, feeling like you're crazy, being told that you're crazy. Or Um, just like the amount of emotions you'd feel, like just depression or sadness or anger. You just just had no idea why you felt the way that you did. And, And a lot of that is in large part to living in a society that is not built for autistic adults and having to pretend like you're a neurotypical person and that's called masking and um women are typically a lot better at it than men but some men are are pretty good at it too um and i I was so good at it that i mean major things with our relationship i didn't even realize i was i mean yeah yeah there's so much to talk about exactly when it comes to masking it's insane that's a whole yeah that's gonna be like a whole other episode but that's something that um that we as autistic females, we know how to do very well. We know how to mimic very well. And so I just knew that there was something different with me. And so I would I would find people to mimic when I was a kid um, because I didn't know how to act. So I would just act like the people around me. And as a teenager, that was a really bad thing because you know, when I had people around me that weren't the best influence, I tried to act like them because I thought that's what I needed to do to have friends. And, um, it usually didn't end well. And that's something that, you know, um, was something I had to learn, but finding out that I was autistic, it just made so much sense because I no longer felt like I was this broken person. Um, a lot of the time with, with women, we get diagnosed with pretty much every mental illness there is before oh. we're um, even thought about for autism. It almost, it almost felt like just seeing the process you went through mm-hmm. during our relationship, it was like the number of doctors that were like, just get over it. Or just it's like, all in your head, it's all in or, your head yeah. or you any of that you crap. see it's the just, pain. You know, it's like it doesn't mean it's there. It's it's something that if, you know, it's not visible on your body, then you're making it up. And that's something that, that doctors shouldn't go to for their default response. But it seems like that's what ends up happening. And, um, and Absolutely. with females it, that are on the spectrum, it was definitely interesting to hear so many other people um, talk about they had the same experience as I did, which I was someone who had a lot of mental health issues um from my teens even in elementary school i mean panic attacks and just well and you were throwing steroids and like i mean they were just guessing they were they i think doctors were guessing with you until yeah well that's my my health conditions yeah Yeah. that's a whole separate thing i mean as far as like uh that goes i mean unfortunately there is a link genetically um for some people with um Ellers Danlos, um, that they also happen to be on the spectrum. So um, that's something that also needs to be talked about more. Yeah. Um, especially for, you know, it autis- yeah, it matters. And for autistics that are nonverbal and can't express that they're in pain or um, sometimes. Or express it in a way that you don't understand. Right. Like, exactly. I mean, with everything that I feel like an autistic person would say, it's all a, a pattern. It's all like a, a trained response sometimes, especially when it comes to pain and things like that. Like, right. especially in front of people that you like, I care what your opinion is, so yeah. I'm going to tell you what what sounds right. What, what? Yeah, exactly. 
Was yeah, it? and we had to really recognize that we were doing that with each other oh, in our yeah. relationship, and that took a lot. And that's yeah. a whole other episode as well. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> autistic there's, relationships when you're both on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, this intro episode is the index of all of our <laughs> yeah <laughs> like episodes. But lots to definitely talk about. But yeah, it was basically my point is that it was um, a relief for me to find out that I was autistic, and uh, yeah, the 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 I went to an autism psychologist and. Um, she diagnosed both of us, but yep. I remember when she gave us the news, she said that there's a grief period that a lot of people go through. And <laughs> I respect that. And I see that, that if that's some people and that's their reaction, you're completely valid in that. But yeah. for me, that was not the response. For me, it was validating. It made me feel better about myself. It made me feel less of just a shitty person. Yeah. And someone who just couldn't get it together and it made me feel more like someone who who had an answer and had reasons why I had behaved the way that I had in the past and it wasn't just because I had poor character it was because I had something going on as far as like something that was different than like, everyone else like a sensory thing yeah. or like I, I I feel like meltdowns or sensory overload like yeah we had a time actually it was this past Tuesday, both of us were sensory overloaded out, like we had had a long day, and I feel like both of us just, we couldn't sleep, there was like, just like a buzz right. going on with both of us that we yeah. just could not shake. But you know, the thing is, now we know what it is, it's yeah. sensory overload, and before, when you have no idea why you're doing that, and you're the only one doing that, and everyone else is not doing that, the guilt. you think something is wrong with you, why can't I just be these people, I'm less than these other people, why, yep. you know, they're better than me because they can hold it together, and it helped me not think that anymore about myself, and it gave me my power back, and it made me feel better about myself as a person how about you i mean it, it did it really made me feel like okay this explains a lot of how i handle things it explained a lot of just how i interacted with you it answered a lot of just how i was so uh, detached I, I i realized like for me i think one of the biggest things was you know, as especially men in general, like you're not supposed to be sensitive or in touch with your emotions and feelings. And I was so out of touch with them that I was ignoring you a lot of the times where it was like, whoa, I did that. I am so sorry that I did that, you know, and it's now I can piece it together. And you, right. you can also explain it to me sometimes, like when you can tell I'm not getting what you're feeling at all. It's like, you're like, okay, think of it like this. And it's like, yeah. once you flip it for me sometimes, yeah. then I get it. And I think it helped our relationship as well to know that we were both on the spectrum. Yeah, and absolutely. Because there are some times where maybe before I knew that, I would think you were being insensitive, but now I, I don't think that anymore. Now I understand that you just don't understand or, or we're having crossed wires. It's not that you're being an asshole no, <laughs> or something. Whereas that, before, maybe I would have taken it that way. Oh, I was an accidental asshole all yeah. the time. Like there was not a time like, yeah, yeah it just too. happened too often. Me too. Which is really, it was really difficult maintaining friendships with women and, um, and girls when I was a kid, because I would accidentally say something sometimes without realizing it, that would hurt someone's feelings or, whatever and then at the end of the day I would take that blame onto myself um and you know just think I was just a horrible person when because everyone was making me feel that way for whatever it was I said but my intention was never how it was interpreted most of the time and I could never understand why there was always this crossed wire kind of thing happening with my relationships and um it has been really great to see the community of people now that we know we're autistic it's yeah. it's insane to meet other people just like ourselves and to see people who have gone through the same struggles who have come out on the other side you know of childhoods with ridicule and bullying and unsupportive people around them and feeling a certain way about themselves and then yep. used that to their advantage to have these amazing lives these strong people um it just makes you feel like there's this whole community of people out there just like you and you're not the only one anymore. And I think I felt that way with the chronic illness community as well because, you know, when you're in pain, you don't know why. You don't know why you're so sick, why you don't have the energy everyone else has. Yeah. You just think, I'm lazy. 
And I really thought that about myself, especially when you have your peers telling you that you are. And to see these other people that have Ellers downloads, these other people that have mast cell or POTS, oh, yeah. and seeing that they have the same struggles. And I guarantee you that we are not lazy. We are no. some of the strongest people you have ever met because there's pain and then there is like chronic illness pain. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, if, if you don't dread the weather, you don't have... We, some, we, yeah. some of the chronic illness the pains yeah. like oh we can both be like meteorologists or yes. weather people yes. I mean, whatever that's called Our, because the barometric <clears throat> just to educate everyone the barometric pressure that um happens when it's about to rain or like uh, a big like change in pressure uh with the yeah. weather i it's mean killer. it it it's um it's like putting a flame on your joints and yeah it hurts yeah, I mean, and, and all the time it's like there's never not one moment that you don't feel pain like for instance right now i'm aware that my hip is on fire my back hurts my neck hurts i mean but part of getting that diagnosis and getting that answer made me feel like i wasn't just making it up or hyper mm -hmm. you know um or just exaggerating the situation um, because sometimes when you're treated that way you you feel that way about yourself well maybe this isn't as bad as I'm making it out to be when in reality you feel like you're dying and so yeah. getting that diagnosis even though there is not that many um, EDS specialists I think there's like a couple around yeah. one in Boston I mean we live in Asheville North Carolina so we you know we're a little bit far away for that but um but there's there, some good doctors There needs to be more, but sure. there's some good doctors here, yeah. yeah. And getting that diagnosis, it really did um, help to send you in the right direction of specialists that you need. Even though there aren't that many EDS specialists in the U.S., um, there does need to be more. Um, most people are at the point now where they kind of know what it means. I mean, we've got some celebrities coming out now, you know, saying, yeah. um, I think that telling people about it. Yeah, like Sia, she just came out as having um, hypermobile, I think it was, Ehlers-Danlos, because there are different kinds. Um, there are some types of EDS that are more severe and yeah. will shorten your lifespan. I think vascular EDS is one of those, and um, that yeah. one that one's tough. Yeah, oh. that, that one, I think, it's, I think it's a short lifespan, and <clears throat> it's really, a lot of, a really lot, scary stuff. A lot of uh, issues there. Um, but, I mean, pretty much anyone with EDS we're going to have some issues, but getting that diagnosis, my geneticist was then able to send me to a physical therapist to help um, with keeping your muscles strong because basically deconditioning your muscles is one of the worst things you can do with EDS. And um, you want to keep those strong to hold yourself up because your body just can't do it. It's like your ligaments aren't strong enough. Yeah. Um, so, I, I heard the analogy once. It's like a wicker chair that had been sat in so many times that the wicker was no longer, you know, tightly bound. It was it was kind of sagging, and that's pretty much how um, our joints and ligaments and connective tissue are with EDS. And so our muscles have to do all of the work to hold us up. I mean, like walking, you know, a few feet for us is like basically, you know, a lot harder, a lot more energy than yeah. well, an actual than than, a, than another person that doesn't have eds and it's also a very much a difference between guys and girls especially with hypermobile eds because guys with our testosterone we're able to have more muscle mass than women we're able to it, like our muscles are stronger our tendons aren't and our ligaments aren't as loose so i experience not nearly the level of pain that you do and it really also like us both getting diagnosed on hypermobile EDS. So like, oh, I think it was what you got, got yours. And then I, I was like a month after. Right. Yeah. And Cause I mean, it was insane because well, what tipped us off is we both got our diagnosis of, he was, he got his POTS diagnosis first mm -hmm. um, because he before anything really passed out and knocked yeah. some teeth out and landed on a sidewalk. That's going to um, be a, Post a whole, other, whole thing yeah, um, because know. part of the side effects of having POTS is fainting. So that was scary. Um, yeah. But, um, and then I had a few years later, my mast cell diagnosis. And then <clears throat> because of the community through Instagram, we started noticing that the people that had these diagnoses also had this thing called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Yeah. And 
it was like, wait a minute, could we have that? You know, and then just a little Google research, it was like, whoa, that sounds like me. But that sounds like you, too. But it's saying it's rare. Could we both have it? And then we both thought, oh, my God, nobody's ever going to believe this. If they thought we were, like, hypochondriacs before, they're going to be like, oh, my God, you have to co-sign each other's illnesses. Like, I mean, it is rare. We're scared of that. Yeah. I mean, we've got, you know, this chronic illness and then like also this different neural type than everyone else that like we we learned all this stuff so quickly and yeah. all at once that it really was like just like a yeah that's a positive hit. thing about autism as well as we both became sort of like engrossed in the topic of all of these things and mm-hmm. educating ourselves as much as we could because it was just so amazing to find out that we had an answer and yeah. being sent to specialists and the right people. Um, I now have braces that I can use when, when it's needed. Um, I use a mobility aid now. Um, yep. Something that I don't think I would have even allowed myself to do before because it would have been like, you know, this feeling of just you're overdoing it. You don't need that really. I mean, it sort of gave me the the push I needed to say, stop doing that to yourself. If you're in pain, use it. Yeah. You know, I have um, a wheelchair for my really, really bad flares. Um, my physical therapist said that would probably be a good idea because unfortunately with women, um, we have hormone surges and our bodies are a little bit more flexible anyway, just because we have children. And so when those hormone surges hit, our um, from basically the first day of ovulation to the first day of your cycle, you have all of these things going on in your body and your joint laxicity gets extremely loose and um, oh. you have a lot of pain. And so that was something that I just couldn't figure out before. Why do I feel good for a week or two? And then I feel like shit for a week or two. Like, I just don't understand. And then it, it would be like, I feel good. I think I'm great. And then it would come again and then just be like, wait, no, I don't feel good. And you just play mental detective. Like, what did I do? What did I eat? Where did I go? I just well, I just remember saying, like, if yeah. I could just find out the what answer. to avoid, yep. I would avoid it and I would feel so much better. And um, Well, and one of the biggest things you figured out, and it's really been just the past few months, is when it gets to that those really laxed sur- hormone surge times, you need to like not move around as much and, right. and when it gets like really yeah. just something I, I, I yeah. wouldn't do I mean I mean you're just speaking to someone over here that was I'm like in the entertainment industry you know um, and so it was just like work out work out try to get yourself in shape and I would you know have personal trainers and do boot camps and boxing and she she you did spin classes right. when you shouldn't you should oh, never this is, i'll uh, tell you what happened spin class i dislocated my hip when i was in boxing <laughs> uh kickboxing like muay thai fight kickboxing we nope. did that together before our wedding um i needed physical therapy for six months i got what the doctor called exercise induced pneumonia and um she, yeah you had to like, i was in so much pain yeah there was it, i like, couldn't breathe i was coughing my lungs out i mean it was awful and then we're just following like standard advice like work through it and like yeah, keep work doing it and keep doing it like i should have never been there to begin no, with you should no I mean, it, because the thing is like you just were ripping your joints apart and causing damage yeah. now that's like still affecting you to this day yeah and, and and that's with the chronic illness side the things that we did the things that we put ourselves through because we had no idea why we felt the way that we did. If I just had known, I wouldn't have beaten myself up so much. And I think that it's so important for anyone that's listening, for anyone that has any sort of health issues, don't let anyone dismiss that. You know your body, you know what's going on. For anyone that feels different, for anybody that feels like I just don't fit in or feel like something is wrong with you as far as like, you know, your, 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 personality i mean it's just like you don't need to feel that way there are a group of people out there who are just like you seek that autism diagnosis you know if you even think that that's something that you're interested in there are lots of things online you could do oh yeah um you know if you score high on those quizzes then maybe you know feel like you could seek an a diagnosis um that's a whole other topic as far as like an adult diagnosis is uh, really tough well and an adult diagnosis like they give you the children like parts of the children's test and it's like wait what like this doesn't this was kind of crazy too because from a lot of people that i spoke with their 
their evaluation was, you know, a few hours in a day. Um, and <laughs> our evaluation ours. was very different. It was three days, actually four. Mine was four days. It was three days, yeah. uh, seven to eight hours a day. It was like a full psych eval. And then she had to reschedule another day and couldn't get me in for like another month almost to get the last bits that she couldn't get to to begin with. <laughs> so it was insane. I mean, it was just like workbooks and puzzles and you know, figuring things out and questions and online questionnaires and, you know, holding up cards showing you like, what emotion is this person? And that was kind of crazy because I always thought I could read people really well. And there were a couple of cards that she held up and it's like, what emotion is this? And it was like, oh, I don't know. Well, and the thing is, like, dude, what was the artist, the the paintings that we both got shown? What was the name of that? Norman Rockwell. Uh, yeah, Norman Ro- Rockwell. The Norman Rockwell paintings like i just felt like the emotions that i I, it was like i could tell i wasn't getting it as the psyche val test was going on but then i was just like okay i gotta just keep on like trying at this and Mm -hmm. by the time i was like guessing it was really was and yeah it was the same one that tripped me up it was a little girl and she had a was beside a sign and she looked really sad and it was like no swimming and she kept asking well, by the way we had our our evaluations completely separate but um but we were you know done did the same thing and uh yeah. and she kept saying don't say anything to your spouse when you go home because you'll and ruin you, the test you didn't i didn't say you, a word, didn't say a word. I, like, I don't want to you know mess anything up but yeah so basically she was asking what is this girl doing and i was like I mean, it took me a minute. It was like, she's sad because she can't go swimming. Like, she was covering her eyes. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, she's sad because she can't go swimming. And she was like, no, try again. And it was like, I don't know. I mean, (laughs) yeah. And the actual answer was, there was like clothes on the sign. And she looked sad and had her eyes covered. And they were covered because she, you know, it said like no skinny dipping or something. And there was like... Yeah. clothes and so yeah it was this whole thing but anyway it, but it was implying something completely different because i started off thinking yeah. she was running away from home like right. not, e- not even the right oh context right. at all oh, like, but you at least got the birthday party one right there was one where oh. it was like they tell this huge detailed story about what this man sees at a party and he's like he goes in he sees the table he sees party hats he sees birthday celebration stuff he sees the kids playing what is the story about and i said it's about all of the things that the man sees (laughs) and that was like a girl's birthday party (laughs) (laughs) which was the right answer but when she said try again i was like because i will initially i said it's about the man's experience that he had at the at the party and she was like try again and i was like oh oh sorry it's about a birthday party but i mean it's just obvious answers i mean it just made me reevaluate myself and it explained a lot. It definitely explained a lot. So something that, you know, we've learned is you are going to have to advocate for yourself. And yeah. it's a long, arduous process for some. And you're probably going to have people tell you things that aren't true. Like, no, you're not sick. The first person that I saw told me I didn't have a connective tissue disorder like EDS. And um, and I do. And I knew that I did. So yeah. I, I saw it. A second opinion who said yes you have right you know, not only do you have it but you, you have <laughs> yeah you you're, you're breaking records yeah. almost i know i've like, had a lot uh, of issues with my mast cell um my entire life really i started having a lot of problems when i was about 14 15 going into anaphylactic episodes like every month and hives and just on steroids and at one point they you know they put me on like kidney transplant medicine cyclosporin and like um immune suppressing drugs at one point they were even talking about chemo i mean it was insane i'm like 15 at this time i mean the anti-organ rejection medicine too that you were on at one point that was crazy it was nuts yeah but i mean it you know it helped though i remember that first night going to sleep and then i actually didn't feel like i was on fire and itching all over it was just one of the best sleeps i'd had in a long time and uh well it that reminds me of when you told me though you were in like such a bad flare and i think it was before you had that medicine or maybe not mm-hmm. you, you tell me but 
they gave you an adrenaline shot yeah. and it, it relieved your pain enough to where you fell asleep when they yeah. thought you were going to be wide awake yeah. and you were just like, yeah. <sighs> I remember that story was crazy. I was like, I think maybe I was 16 at that point And my mom took me to the ER because I was, I was going into anaphylactic shock and I was starting to not be able to breathe. I had actually not knowing I had any of this stuff. I had gotten my hair highlighted that day. And, um, and I guess being around too many chemicals and everything at that time, I was so hypersensitive um, that I, uh, yeah, I had a really bad reaction. And so we got there and the nurse or the, the, the front desk person basically said, you know, you're going to have to take a seat. And my mom said, oh, no, 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 she needs to see a doctor right now. And um, she was like, well, there's not a doctor right now that, you know, you need to ha- have a seat. And I walked up to the window and she took one look at me and they like rushed me back <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and they were like, you're going to probably clean your whole house tonight. And you know, this is straight adrenaline. <laughs> and um, I did, I just, I, I went right to sleep. I mean, it was just like, I felt so much relief that I had not felt and it was torturous. And at that point, basically nobody still knew. I mean, my, my parents oh. took me to the best of the best doctors. I ended up being taken to Emory in Atlanta and basically all they said was you have some sort of issue where your body is attacking itself and you're having allergic reactions to it. They basically described mast cell um, activation syndrome, but it just didn't have a name then. Yeah, um, and didn't know what, I mean, it, I think mast cell wasn't really right. understood until the 2000s right. to the way it is exactly. now. But yeah. yeah, there's so much that we can talk about, so much that we can get into, but basically we just wanted to talk about a little bit about ourselves and um, and what we want to accomplish out of having this podcast, and we just want to help people. Yeah. And, yeah. and the chronic part of all of this, it's not meant to be complaining or whining about our our illnesses. It It's more of wanting to share the stories and information we've gone through because there's right. a lot. And, I mean, as a, a side little funny is, you know, chronic uh, the whole weed analogy thing and all that yeah it's I mean, a double entendre it's a definitely a double entendre <laughs> because i guess if that's saying that right yeah um, that we are yeah. chronically ill and we also like the chronic yes yes <laughs> i mean if i could meet snoop that would be great yes someone hook that up for me please yeah finding out that i had eds actually the one of the first things i thought was that's why i'm such a pothead <laughs> just because <laughs> You know, it helps my pain levels so much. And, yeah. and also, um, I read an article um, talking about how uh, cannabis was actually a mast cell stabilizer. So um, I know that, that that's something that's been super helpful for, for me and um, something that, that Matt... Oh, man. I introduced Matt yeah. when he met me. I was the bad influence. <laughs> uh, no, well, I, I mean, the first time she introduced it to me, I was like, I got to work tomorrow. Am I going to be all right? And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I was like, Matt, I this mean, is not like alcohol. Oh, uh, you'll be able so, to work tomorrow because yeah. you're going to have the best sleep of your life. <laughs> and, I, and I did. And now, and now it's like, realistically, I mean, need it for sleep just to like numb the pain mm-hmm. enough to be able to yeah. have a good night's sleep. It's, it's important. And, and, well, what we do also because smoke is is really tough as far as like a trigger um yeah absolutely. and so we have something called the magical butter maker um, oh yeah at first we made butter and put it in treats but then we were like we have to find a healthier uh, option well i mean when you eat you can only eat so many brownies every day to, yeah to, and, it then like, it's like uh, bad and i have an issue with chocolate anyway um people who have mast cell tend to do a lot better if you stay away from histamine um, that's really, and his, and chocolate is in histamine. So, yeah. or I'm sorry, histamine is in chocolate. So, um, that's something that I have to, to do sparingly, but, um, I just have to do it sometimes. But what we ended up doing that worked well for us was, um, not only can you make butter, but you can also make coconut oil. And that is amazing. The yes. coconut oil making, I, I, she doesn't actually touch it at all. He's I, the connoisseur. I, He's yeah. the... He is the guy. I, I don't want to bake anything. I don't want to cook food at all for the most part. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while. But yeah, most, I, I do the cooking. She, she does the food. But when it comes to the, our coconut oil, I'm all, I like, she, I, I don't even have you lift a finger. Right. Because he, he loves it. And he does such a great job. And then. I mean, it's it, great. It's great because basically what we do is we pair it with tea. 
Yeah. And, um, and I know certain teas are high histamine. So um, one that that works for me is a, and it's also an antihistamine, is a rooibos. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I mean, it sounds right to me. So, But, um, and a little bit of coconut oil. If you can't do a tea, you could do a little hot water. Um, we put just a drop of stevia. Yeah, and that's great. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, um, we are living in Asheville and we're kind of hippy dippy a little bit. So we put I mean, oat milk and that's O A T if if you haven't had it. It's yeah. I mean in Asheville it's <laughs> everywhere. It's yeah, like, you know, I mean, <laughs> but grocery stores here run out. But yeah, yeah, oh my god. The first time they started stocking the oat milk creamers here, they sold out. Like people were just just taking the whole case of, case of them. I mean it's it's insane. But anyway, that in the tea and if you actually want to see this whole process being made, um, you can go to Matt's Instagram. Spectrum me, Matt. Yes, Spectrum me, Matt, and um, and he uh, has a, this whole detailed process in his story highlights labeled 420. Yep, <laughs> yep, and it is awesome. Yeah, and it's it's just it it's one of those things where it, I'm really hoping weed or cannabis, however you want to say it. It's just 100% legal across the whole U.S. It would really be ideal if it happened on 420 of 2020. <laughs> so you'd be like 420, 2020, 2020. Like okay, you just kept yeah. on going. He's It'd a numbers great. guy. Yeah, way. yeah. <laughs> Autism is sticking out there on that one too. I am not, which is so funny. Um, my strengths, and you know, he had he or like his weakness and vice versa. Yeah. Um, I have something called dyscalculia, and that is basically like being dyslexic in math and we're with numbers and yeah. so um and he's good with numbers yeah, so but then words i have a huge problem with i don't know the scientific term for it <laughs> like that but <laughs> i i know there are times where i will think like on like or like i'll i'll have like extremes of words where it, right. it just and it doesn't, comes off like extremely rude oh my gosh but and it's not at all what it, it means yeah it's like the accidental asshole part of me just like and, and i don't mean it at all it's right. just like i this is what I think it means, and right. then. But that happens, yeah. you know. And now you know, and now you know why, and now we know why, and it's helped our relationship a lot. Yeah, and, um, and, it really has. Yeah, and while we were talking about Instagram, actually, um, it's, you should tell them why you named yourself Spectrum Me, Matt, because some oh. people could think Spectrum Me is kind of like a, kind of like a not the most PC word, I guess. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I but, mean, people have used it as an insult, but right. I mean, we're taking it back. We're well, taking power and, back. And I, I named my account Spectrum Me, Matt, way before Joe Rogan did whatever insulting thing he did with yeah. saying the word yeah. Spectrum Me. I, I didn't as really... an insult on someone, like yeah. No. But realistically, for for me, it. It was, I was telling, uh, I forget who I was telling. Your this. therapist. Yeah, I was telling my therapist. And at, at first, I was explaining, like, my behaviors and stuff. And I'm like, I think I need a formal autistic diagnosis. And, and because we, I, I got the idea that I was autistic from your your diagnosis, yeah. from your therapist. I basically and, got mine first. And yeah. I was like, wait a minute, but he's just like that. And then yeah. I looked back on relationships and the longer relationships that I had were with people who were also on the spectrum. They didn't realize it, but you, but know, you realized but I, it. I, looking at, back, looking it's like, back. whoa, he was totally on the spectrum. Yep. Um, you know, and it, it, like several people I had dated before and it was like, Matt seems like he's on the spectrum too. I mean. Yeah. And then when we started thinking about it, it was like, okay, this, this is lining up. This makes sense. And then when I was starting to tell my therapist he was just like no nah, but you handle things so well and stuff like that and i had to like give examples where it was like painfully obvious like there's um pretty well known that like textures and like fab like things bug people and things like that and you can ask anyone in my family <laughs> I, in fact actually i have several siblings that uh claim fame to uh torturing me or having ch having fun <laughs> chases with this but um i am terrified of cotton it, not it, 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 specifically cotton balls like and it, i it, love it, to torture him oh my god <laughs> the, the years of torture that she's done and i mean yeah. i really could be worse but it's she more could. of a threat now it's yeah like, it's, it's more <laughs> of like don't make me do this or whatever if you like, do this i'm gonna throw cotton balls on you in right. your sleep <laughs> yeah but i mentioned that to my therapist i was like look like the texture of cotton if it like 
explaining pulling it apart and right. like explaining it to him i'm like that bothers the crap out of me and it just like but other things like personality things yeah. you know personality traits and things you know and and he basically and, said and like, he was basically like yep that's a little spectrumy and it's like yeah. oh, oh. I, I felt like i was like negotiating with someone like i had this and it's like that's not that's not cool so right. exactly but we both got the formal diagnosis and like it really made a difference to click in on that but right my experience with you know the first time that autism was brought up with me was actually um when my therapist after almost a year of therapy uh sent me to a med provider because it was just like you know you have depression you're you maybe have some other issue going on like maybe you need some sort of medication and um and i had gone that whole route in my teens and that did not work well for me um something that happens with women on the spectrum is you know we start getting diagnoses of mental health problems when in actuality the mental health issues are a direct result of us masking our entire yeah. lives and it, it just starts taking a toll on our mental health and that's usually when when a diagnosis is even talked about and and the med provider started diagnosing me with things like bipolar borderline personality disorder adhd and you know, it was like, really? But am I? I don't think I am. I mean, I've, I've heard bipolar kind of thrown around when I was a kid. and, and Well, and ADD and things yeah. like that. And no. it's like, and I do not have, I don't think I have that. I'm not really sure. Maybe like aspects of that. But um, yeah. when I went back to my therapist who, who knew me, you know, very well, she was like, yes, you do have aspects of those pers- things in your personality. You have aspects of those behaviors but not enough to make a formal diagnosis. And it was like, you, I don't think that you are bipolar. I don't think that you have these specific mental illnesses. And then she started talking, you know, about um, how she feels like maybe there's something else going on. Maybe there's something that's not being talked about. And she had mentioned something earlier about another client of hers that had Asperger's that was similar to me. And it was like the wheels started turning Mm -hmm. and it was like, I thought about it. And then at the time I didn't even mention it to her. And I I came home and I I started Googling Ted talks about women on the spectrum. And it was like, could I be autistic? I mean, really? I mean, cause the first thing you think of is you, you think about people in school for me, I just remember the autistic kids, um, they were in different classes and they acted different than me. And that was because the people that I remembered were people that had an intellectual disability. Um, that That's where we're tricky because right. we don't have an intellectual disability. We, we just, Which is a separate thing from autism. Yeah. Autism is a neurotype. Yeah, It's exactly. not an illness or a disease. Um, it's you, how you can, our brains are wired. We yep. have like a lot more wiring than the average person and yeah. which some it's kind of a curse at times, but a lot of times it's a blessing because you know, we see things differently. We're so sensitive. And, and our and our focus when it's on your special interest, you can focus better than right. anyone else. It's helped the, you in the yeah. IT world. Oh, absolutely. It's helped me as far as like musically um yeah. you know, uh I've always been able to have, I have a musical ear. Uh, I can memorize things really quick. I mean, it's, yeah, it's something that's, that's been helpful for me. When I came home and I started watching these TED Talks with these women on the spectrum, it was like looking at myself, everything they were saying, everything they were talking about, their experiences. I just started crying. And I remember saying to Matt, I think, I think I'm autistic. And it was just like, whoa. And, um, but I'm going to talk to my therapist about it. And I, I I didn't believe it for myself even. I was like, no. I mean, I, I maybe I'm just coming up with this. Like, there's no way, you know. And then when I brought it up to my therapist, she just got this look on her face. And she was just like, how did I miss it? I... <laughs> I 100% agree with you. Yeah. Well, and, well, and the thing I is... Think you, I think you're autistic. I mean... Yeah. And the thing is, too, with... with your therapist before you even got the formal diagnosis Mm -hmm. it was like it then placing and understanding your autism and then seeing like your traumas and what you've experienced in life and things like that that is where it like 
kind of just gave you permission yeah. to like let it go right well, it, it, yeah. and, and it really did yeah yeah not to be all hippy dippy about it but it really it's like yeah. you, you, it helped to, let it to like let it go because like it everyone did. says let it go or else it'll just eat you up or you know right. the more you hold on to it it'll burn you up inside or whatever right. and it's like um i couldn't let go of a lot of things mentally until I was like, "Oh, I'm autistic as fuck." Okay, like <laughs> that's why. That makes I, so much sense. That's why I've not forgotten about this yeah. one thing in my childhood for the you know my whole <laughs> life or whatever. You know exactly it's like, because as as autistic people, we we sometimes we we know this about ourselves. Now we will loop things and uh-huh. obsess over things, and but knowing that about yourself helps you to forgive yourself for doing it it doesn't necessarily mean that oh knowing that makes you stop doing it it's like no i can't control my brain sometimes but the fact that i know that now makes me feel better about it and as a as a person who has been diagnosed you know in the past with mental illness um it was nice to know that like i'm not someone who's just crazy you know and and not saying that that no. all people with mental illness are crazy because they're not because I do have clinical depression I you know have issues with anxiety um, I have a generalized anxiety disorder but at the same time just to know that like I don't know that that there's a reason and there's an answer and that you're not just crazy because that yeah. was something that I was called a lot crazy I was made to believe I was crazy it was like oh she's crazy because you know when I was in my teens and and we'll get into this on another episode but I had a meltdown to the point where, you know, my mom didn't know what was going on. I was just freaking out, thought I was going to harm myself. And so I basically ended up, uh, you know, a meltdown, which if I had known I was autistic, they would have realized this is a meltdown. Um, You know, I just was like losing my mind. I just wanted to die. And, you know, I became like kind of suicidal and, and you know, this meltdown transpired and eventually ended up me being handcuffed in the back of a cop car and, uh, taken to, you know, uh, like a mental health facility for teens. And, um, I ended up staying just one night because, you know, they saw all the medications that I was on and talked to me. And so they actually, you know, let let me go the next day. Luckily Um, they heard you and and, they heard me. yeah. Yeah. But at the same time I needed, I needed help. I needed something and I you know didn't know what I needed my parents were there for me but you know they could only do so much because they didn't know what was going on with me either and um so I well, got and- in there and I, I and I'm asked I, I was yeah. like I don't want to stay here and it was just really tough to see these girls my same age you know that had slit their wrists or they had done something <laughs> to try to take their life and and it was so sad and it was just like I remember I've always looked a little bit older than I actually am. I'm like almost six feet tall. And, and so when I, when I still shorter than me, (laughs) yes, he's taller. But like, um, when I was admitted, everyone thought that I was the new counselor. And, um, and so (laughs) you didn't tell me that they did. I remember that. And I was like, no, I'm not the new counselor. I'm like your age. I'm, you know, admitted to, (laughs) and, um, (laughs) pretty heavy topic there for a second but um but basically you know not knowing that I was autistic you know landed me in in a place like that and um maybe I didn't need to be and that could have not happened had we known beforehand and um yeah it's something that is really important and we've got a lot of stories to tell and a lot of things that we've been through that we're hoping can help a lot of other people yeah and that's kind of what we want to accomplish with this and we're gonna we're gonna do some things where um, obviously this one's more just us introing, but, uh, I'm going to try and have a link where people can, uh, send us voice messages and you can actually be part of our podcast. And yeah. Mr. I, tech guy over yeah. here. He has all the extras. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be extra Eddie with some of the podcast stuff for sure. Cause yeah. I, I mean, a lot of this, we want to involve people and we want to really make this something that we do on a, on a, like a good monthly basis i think is what we're gonna aim for we wanted to do this at the beginning of january but there's a little thing called executive dysfunction that some people have with uh we've got we've got uh uh, phds (laughs) uh dysfunction yeah so basically like uh just making yourself do things that you 
you know don't want to do but you know you need to do yeah and so we wanted to do the podcast but it was like the setting up the getting ready the you know learning the information first like we just kept kind of putting it behind putting it yep. you know aside and so finally a month late but we're we're finally doing it um uh give us also a follow on instagram um yep. i run the um the instagram page for the podcast um it's at the chronic couple and um to all of you guys that follow me that have been asking about the podcast i'm really excited to put it out there for you guys and thank you so much for giving us all of this encouragement um we both have had self-esteem issues and so this is something that is really scary for both of us but oh, this is yeah. and- something that we we feel like we just have to do it we need to do it we've been through all of these experiences and we just don't want them to be for nothing we want them to be something that we went through to help other people. Yeah, because there's so much hardship that you go through in life that you think is something like inherently wrong with you. Yes. And I've had so many t- experiences in my life, and so have you, where it's like I I don't I don't know how to really go about like living my life. You know, a, a lot of years of just self-deprecating thoughts and yeah. just all kinds of it, it, uh, it it's like if someone says something negative about you yeah and a lot of autistics are like this it's like you Take just loop on it and you'll loop on it forever and then it makes you question how you are with everyone not just that person it's like it makes you question yourself and and we have a tendency to take all the blame on us yeah, and, um, absolutely. Because that's kind of what we're used to doing because we feel so strange. It's like being an alien on a planet where like you have to just pretend to blend in, but yeah. you really sometimes have a hard time doing that and, and putting up the mask is really, really difficult. Um, and a lot of people, you know, in the community are trying to unmask and then a lot of people don't feel safe unmasking. Um, yeah. So it's it's really difficult. Well, and the thing is, too, like, um, I, I know for myself, a lot of my work is working with customers and, you know, you got to be nice and friendly. The customer's always right, all that kind of thing. But I, there's so many times where it's like, I realize now my issues with work aren't really, it, they're self-imposed stress, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You, you, you can have some, so much that you put on yourself that isn't needed or isn't necessary yeah. or isn't at all what everyone else is thinking, but you think that. So all right. of a sudden, you know, you're being chased by a herd of Buffalo or whatever. I, I don't know. It's just <laughs> the fight or flight response. Yes. That yeah. whole thing. It's yeah, crazy. exactly. Over something like ordering, I mean, oh, like yeah. on a menu, like something that simple, but you know, like drive through suck. Yeah. Um, drive through yeah. suck. Um, <laughs> texting is a lot better than phone calls. Um, yeah. Phone yeah. calls. I don't, I don't do well on because I can't see the other person. I can't see what their facial expressions or their reactions are. Um, I think because I don't intuitively like know sometimes what someone's feeling, I will, I've become hyper aware of how people move. Um, so that I can sort of logically figure it out. And so because of that, a lot of times I am hyper aware of situations to the point where people have said, like, are you psychic? Because I could tell something was about to happen because I can see every little nuance of this is going on in all of these different areas. This is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And so um, you almost become yeah hyper aware. And there are different things as far as autism and empathy people think oh you don't have any empathy you have no feelings i mean it's not that you don't have empathy it's more of your empathy you have to have an experience that you can relate with in order to be able to understand it to have the empathy and some people some autistics do have low empathy which is fine but it doesn't mean that they're bad people because they are also intelligent enough to be able to say the things that they need to say to you to you know in that moment just because they don't have the empathy for you like and then on the other side of the coin there are people who have hyper empathy that's me i have hyper empathy i think matt's probably on the lower end of the empathy and <laughs> yeah probably and like i am on the high high end to the point where i have you know hyper hyper empathy and i feel everything i feel what the person is feeling i feel 
just like sometimes I have to walk on eggshells because of other people's emotions. And that's something I'm really working on. That's something that I no longer want to do because I'm not responsible for everyone's emotions anymore. Yeah. And well, and, um, and also it's, tough. it's a sensory thing. Oh, it, you know, even emotions, right. it, you can get a sensory overload from anything. And that right. includes even if I might not be able to translate your disdain from for something I'm doing or whatever, like a person might have a facial expression that I am not picking up on and I'm just making the issue worse and have no idea. And then all of a sudden someone's mad at me when they've been expressing it non-verbally for hours. And I'm like, right. huh? What what just happened? Yeah. What? what? I don't like. I see, exactly. You know? And me, I'm the opposite. I know that they're upset with me because I can tell by a small nuance in like the tone of their voice. You, you probably know it's before like, they even know they're right. upset Right. Oh, yeah. I can like, see it in their body yeah. language that they're upset with me. And then you just become like you panic almost like, what did I say? What did I do? I mean, and you know, that was something that I did all the time, but it's like knowing now that I'm autistic, it's, it's like, Oh, that's why I did that. And it's giving me a little bit more of a, a little bit more confidence to be like, yeah, "Yeah, that's why I did that. And I'm going to really try not to do that anymore Yeah, because that's exhausting. And it made me also feel okay about the fact that I don't, really want a lot of friends people and, and, and kind of give you shit for not having friends you yeah know, it's like oh loser or whatever and um and i've had friends i've had a large friends friend group in the past you and actually had more friends than it I was have exhausting my whole life. yeah it was exhausting i have uh, this bad habit of just like i don't know just like i'll have a friend and then you know or be friends with people i work with or whatever and i'll be nice and cordial and mask and do the things i need to do and i a lot of times i'll end up getting taken advantage of because i will give too much and the person will not respect me and then i will take and take and then i'll hit a point where i will explode and give them all of the internalized like you know things that i've had through through the whole relationship and i will just end up cutting them off I mean, and yep. I, I've done that quite a few times and because at the end of the day, like a, a couple of friends is fine and I see them, you know, every a couple of times a month, maybe whatever. And that's just fine with me. And um, a lot of times women will expect me to want to talk every day or text every day and that doesn't work for me. So then I'm a bad but, friend. And But the thing is, you've the friend group that you've made in Instagram with chronic illness and autism and everything like that you've been able to manage that better because it's like i feel like it's more of a you you can do things like like an image and you know that person person is seeing you and cares about you kind of right. thing whereas yeah you know the the commitment of like a a, a person-to-person relationship right. you've got okay, I got to text something or I got to say something just right because this person feels this way or, you know, as you know people and things like that. Yeah, and and honestly, real friendships do exist through social media. I mean, it's something that, for instance, with the chronic illness community, um, it's an outlet because a lot of these people are are bedridden or tired or, you know, have to do a lot of of rest and a lot of self-care and it gives them this group of people to speak with who understand because so many in, in your life, like your real life don't get it. And, and you're persecuted or accused of lying or faking when, when things start to get too much for the people around you. So it's great to have this community that, that gets you and it makes you feel seen and heard. And then as far as the autism community, that was just, Oh my gosh, the same way. I mean, it was just like this huge realization of all these people and showing that like, it's okay to, to have an interest you're, obsessed with and then it's called info dumping where you just like talk a lot about it and like they don't care <laughs> you yeah know, it's this, fine. This pod, these podcasts might be info dumps for right. everyone just heads basically up. <laughs> that maybe we should call that yeah. just name the podcast info dumping yeah. with brandy and matt but <laughs> topic the chronic of the day. couple info dump <laughs> yes <And> just... <laughs> <laughs> exactly but like it, it, it did it was really cool because there's so many people that we've met and and we speak to and we talk 
to them, you know, and, and pretty just, regularly. Yeah. yeah. And it's really great to have that outlet. And, um, for me, it works a little bit better, I think, than having a large friend group in real life. And, um, so that was something that I felt a lot, a lot better about, a lot more confident about is like, you know what? But I mean, there again, some autistics have large friend groups. Some people yeah. are a lot more social. Matt is the more social of the two of us. Well, but what's funny is I, I can get sensory overloaded. Right. It's like, I, I, I want to be social with people, but if it's too loud or too many people or too bright, right. like I, I'll shut down after it's yeah. like, I feel like my outside of the house time is about five or six hours. And then after about five or six yeah. hours, I am powerhousing through whatever right. is whatever it is I'm doing, you know? Yeah. And it, it comes to a big surprise for a lot of people when they hear that I'm antisocial because I'm so good at pretending like I'm not. Yeah. Um, so in reality, I, you know, am most of the time in this situation just because I don't want to hurt or offend the other person. But yeah, don't want to hurt people's feelings. But right. you know what's funny is I think because of my profession of computers and everything like that, Anyone hearing I'm antisocial is like, well, yeah, you're in your computers. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. no, <"Nah>, duh. <laughs> like, Basically, people need to just thank autistics for, you know, um, uh, computers. Computers. Yeah. <laughs> we, all, actually, all electronics. You just should be like, man, someone autistic really did a great job at this. Yes. And, <laughs> and I, I definitely know I, I want to invent and make stuff. There, there's right. things in, in, my books of things that right. I, I want to make and do. and yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it just, yeah, these answers that we've found yeah. have basically changed our lives for the better. And we just want to share that with someone else who may be searching for some of the same answers. Yeah. And, um, and if you guys have any questions, you can just go to um, either Inst- one of our Instagrams. Yeah. Um, we'll link this with the podcast with information. And, um, and just, you know, ask us a question yep. and we'll try to get to it on the next episode. Yeah. I, I, I think we want to really get more people to just engage with us on this because it's, it, it's not a one post and then all, all answers are solved on these topics. Like it's a, it's a lifelong journey right. and we've lived several years of this, so. I think we have a lot we can talk about. Yeah, a lot we can share with everyone. Yeah. And uh, and hopefully we'll be able to do it. This is a little bit more of a serious one, I guess, because we were, you know, introducing ourselves and everything. But it's not always going to be serious. Like, uh, no, we want to just make it, like, lighthearted as well and um, and just talk about our daily lives and our experiences and, you know, like, what we really feel about something because that's what we just want to share with everyone. Yeah. Even though being... In this situation, I have to say, I feel like we need to now advertise our sweaty balls. <laughs> yes, our sweaty balls. Um, I asked Santa for a lot today. I asked for a wooden box and a, <laughs> a crayon. Like, I mean, it's just... <laughs> for those of you who have no idea what we're talking yeah. about, the Saturday Night Live special, uh, the <laughs> little skit... <laughs> It's the equivalent of the musical cowbell for podcasts, except yes. you know the sweaty balls. Oh, and then there's uh, also the the with Betty White the the bran muffin episode. Oh my god, the old muffin, uh, dusty muffins. Her dusty muffins. <laughs> oh. So anyway, so to wrap it up, um, we hope that you guys enjoyed our talk and our chat and mm. our introductions and hopefully you'll tune in because we have lots of information to share and yeah. lots of things to talk about and hopefully we will you know help some people out there yeah it should be fun and thanks for listening thanks